yes, my goal is for you to own as much real estate in the long term so that you can create long term wealth. But the subleasing strategy is a super powerful way to get your feet wet, get experience, accelerate your cash flow, then go. Hey everyone, welcome to the Jorge Contreras Show, a podcast for real estate entrepreneurs and for those who want to get to 10K a month with Airbnb, with and without owning real estate. And I'm doing a solo show today, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be breaking down the subleasing strategy step by step. Okay, I know when a lot of people are are following me on my podcast or YouTube or Instagram or anywhere on social media because they want to start an Airbnb business. Nine out of 10 times, it's because they want to start with the subleasing strategy, which is that sexy model, right? Where we get permission in writing from property owners or managers, and then we launch the property um, as an Airbnb. So let me let me just kind of start from the very beginning, okay? What is subleasing? Subleasing is a process where we get in contact with property owners. We pitch to them that we're looking to rent their properties and utilize it as a short-term rental. We get permission in writing. Yes, it's 100% legal. And then we launch it as a short-term rental. Obviously, there's a lot more that goes into it, but that's kind of like you know the 10,000 foot view, just a general overview of exactly what subleasing is. So how does subleasing work? Well, typically we sign a lease agreement for 12 months, giving us permission to rent the property, and then allowing us to run our short-term rental business. Usually we also want permission in writing to be able to change the locks. Why? Because typically in a lease agreement, it's going to state that you cannot change the locks, which is very standard when you are actually living in the property. But when you are renting the property and doing subleasing to run your short-term rental business, it's important you get permission in writing. Never, ever, ever do the business behind the landlord's back because it's just a matter of if, not when you get caught and your business will be short-lived. And why go through all that work, all that dedication, uh, time and money invested for it to be short-lived? If you want to build a sustainable and scalable business, you want to do it correctly with permission in writing from the very beginning. The next question I want to cover is why do we sublease? I get this question all the time. And the reason we sublease is because it is the fastest way to create financial freedom. Here's the thing. You can launch your first sublease with seven to $15,000. Because what if you start with a studio or a one-bedroom apartment or a two-bedroom house? You pay the first month, deposit, furniture, decor, and pictures, and boom, you're up and running. Now, obviously, yes, there's going to be properties where it does take a lot more capital. And typically that happens when you're starting with much larger, luxurious, high-end properties where the rent is like four or 5,000 a month. And I do have a couple of those, but I didn't begin. When I started, my first properties were going for like 1,500 a month. And so obviously my goal uh, for my listeners, for my followers, for my students is to have as many properties on the ownership side, because that's where you ultimately create long-term wealth. However, most people are not in the position to go and buy two and three properties, but a lot of people are in the position where they can go and sublease one, two, or three properties. And so by starting with the subleasing strategy, you can actually accelerate your cash flow grow your capital fast, then go and start buying a ton of real estate. Does that make sense? So that is why we start with the subleasing strategy. It's the most effective and fastest efficient way to create financial freedom. What does that mean? If your monthly expenses are say 5,000 a month, well, once you start making 5,000 a month with passive income from Airbnb, then all of a sudden having a job is, a, is not a necessity or an obligation it's an option. That's what you call financial freedom. When the month, when the monthly income you make in your sleep covers all of your monthly expenses. Another question to address, why would landlords allow us to use their properties as short-term rentals? If there is so much money to be made, why wouldn't the owner just do it themselves? And here's my short answer. When you go to a barbershop or a nail salon or a restaurant, Nine out of 10 times, the people who own those businesses do not own the real estate in which those businesses are built on top of. 
Does that make sense? And so the people who own the real estate, they just want mailbox money. They're not in the barber, nail salon, or restaurant business. They just want mailbox money, mailbox money. That's it. They want to be completely passive. They don't want to be involved in anything that requires operations. They want to be involved in, in passive income. They think of Airbnb as active, which it's active because somebody needs to clean it all the time. Every once in a while, there's going to be maintenance, but when you properly automate the business, it will be a passive income business where you're working on the business, not in the business. Does that make sense? So that's why they allow us to rent their properties because they just want mailbox money. Uh, typically, when we are looking for Airbnbs, it does have to qualify and meet our criteria. Not all properties are created equal. So when we are looking for properties, there are four things that it must have. And there is a bonus also. And with the number one, it depends on your finances because I have two business models. Business model one is a two bedroom, one bath, 700 square feet or more. And it can be an apartment or a house. And a two one is going to be typically more affordable than the second option, which is a three bedroom, two bath house 1,100 square feet or more. So if you're on the end where uh, finances are a little tight, then you can go with the 2-1. And if you have the extra capital and you want to go bigger right off the bat, then you can start with the 3-2 house, okay? After that, the second thing is that it must have AC and heat. Number three, it must be renovated because we do not want to renovate a property that we do not own. It should already be renovated. Um, and it should have parking for two vehicles or more. So let's recap. A 2-1, 700 square feet or more, or a 3-2, uh, 1,100 square feet or more. Parking for two vehicles, renovated, AC and heat. Number five is more of a bonus, and that is if the property has furniture and appliances already, right? That's going to keep a lot of money in your pocket. So those are the types of things that we look for in properties in order for them to qualify. Now let's talk about what are some things that you must avoid when looking at properties to Airbnb. Number one is you want to avoid properties that are on a main street for obvious reasons. But in case it's not obvious, a lot of people feel that it's kind of dangerous and it is going in and out of the driveway when you have cars going 60, 70 miles an hour, because sometimes people drive crazy on a main street. Like I used to have this property that was on the main street leading into a freeway. And so yes, people were going 60, 70 miles an hour. The uh, second thing that you wanna avoid is properties that are near a train station or a train track. I'm talking like less than half a mile. Reason being is imagine there's a family that just got into your Airbnb. They're super tired from all the travels and there's this train so loud that it doesn't allow them to sleep. And this happens, right? I've seen so many houses that are literally right next to a train track and it can be very disturbing. So avoid properties on a main street and avoid properties near a train station or train tracks. Okay, so these are some of the things that I look for uh, again, when it comes to starting an Airbnb business. And again, yes, my goal is for you to own as much real estate in the long term so that you can create long term wealth. But the subleasing strategy is a super powerful way to get your feet wet, get experience, accelerate your cash flow, then go take that capital and start buying a ton of real estate. The other thing that you want to do to make sure that you are operating in the right areas is you want to check the city ordinances. Typically, what I recommend is for you to go on Google and type, this is me typing on Google, and put um, building departments in the city of. Whatever city it is, just type that, and then the phone number is going to come up. Call them and say, hello, um, what is your short-term rental ordinance? And they're going to give you three possible outcomes. Number one, hey, Jorge, we actually don't regulate Airbnbs or short-term rentals. Go ahead and launch. That means they don't require a permit. Possibility number two, hey, you need a permit in order to launch. And in some cities, you actually need the permit in order to upload the property to Airbnb. And in other cities, you can launch it and get the permit later. The way you would know which one it is, you just ask. Possibility number three, 
is, hey, we don't allow short-term rentals, period. They're banned in the area. In my experience, about 3% of cities don't allow at all. And in about 97% of cities, you either don't need a permit or you get a permit. With that being said, everybody, I do have a free ebook in the description down below. Check out the link. It's called Passive Income Generator. So if you want to learn more about starting your Airbnb business without owning real estate, without a real estate license, because you don't need it, and without experience, check out that free ebook. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks.